Uh, first up, uh, he plays Colin in the show, Skeeno Wrench. And you know him from so many things, and he's in so many things right now, the gentleman and all kinds of things. In addition to Parrish, please welcome as Gray Parrish, Giancarlo Esposito. to, uh, you know, want to watch this because it's in the middle of its run right now. Giancarlo, you are also executive producer of this as well. Yes, I am. <laughs> so it's an eight-year journey to get this particular show to the screen. It's a very personal story for me, um, and it's a story of every man, every woman, um, who, uh, this particular man, Ray Parrish, is hiding a certain past that he's been try he tried to walk away from and became a family man. So the show is a crime drama that's very exciting and electrifying. And yeah, and he's kind of the wheel man for a crime syndicate as well. Uh, in, in he is due to his unfortunate encounter with an old and very dear friend. It's pulled back into a life that he tried to leave behind uh, for one last job to be able to get out of the debt that he's in in his black car business and to save his home. So the impetus behind it is that he's sacrificing himself for this one job for his family and then he gets pulled back in for a number of reasons. So much to talk about. Let's take a look at a scene from Parrish, right here. Yeah. Woo! Now, there are stories from that day, are there not? Here they are. Oh my God. Colin, you play in this, and I love the Cajun accent. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, New Orleans is certainly a character in this piece, but the, a little bit more about that day, stuff you don't see. Um, we had lightning strikes, we had 30 minute delays, we had so much work to get done. We had four scenes there by the water that we sort of instinctually in, in one take began doing as one, which wound up in 10, 12 minute takes. But they were really electric and they were saving us time and then we had lunch, had another strike up against it, we turned the cameras around and he and I get to this point and, and the cut starts there where he shoves me. But in one of them, I shove him back. And there was a point in this scene where some other things were needed, and so the edge of that bank was sort of cut out. Well, he slipped and went off of this bank into the water. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh, man, I think I just lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> and so I reached down to grab him. He's ad-libbing stuff, off, you know, and I reached down to grab him up, and he pulls me in. Now, they were clearing alligators out of this pond earlier that day. <laughs> now we're in there ad-libbing, ad-libbing, we get out, and he continues the scene, we continue this whole elaborate thing that goes on after 15-minute take that the crew erupts in applause after we finish. And unfortunately, it's not there, but in our hearts, it's there. That is a memory we will never, we will never forget. Uh, there's a lot of car action in this, too. You as a driver, and you, so you're working with cars, and you, you two, even as a promotion for this, I happen to see it online, uh, both entered a go-kart race against each other. I mean, seriously, you're taking this seriously. And I hate to say it, but he won. He did. <laughs> That's okay, I'm a street racer, he's a track. Right, exactly. We have, we have different skill sets. Someone's chasing me, I'll always win. <laughs> What is it about this character? We loved you on AMC. I mean, when you think of Giancarlo, you think of AMC too, between Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And this like, such a monumental kind of run that you had with those shows, and now you're back with this network. Uh, and I'm so happy to say, leading your own show. This show is like no other that they have seen on their network. And what makes it personal for me is that this, it's the story of someone who's struggling to overcome a dark past and live in a brighter future, but unable to make that choice. 
and a person who's up against the wall economically will do many things that are out of character and out of the ordinary. Um, what I love to see about the Gray Parish's journey, and I think where the audience will join us, and I hope that you will, is that you'll, you'll want him, you'll see him making bad decisions, and you'll want him to make better ones. He is an anti-hero, which means he's a good man, but he's being sucked back down the drain. He doesn't want to go that way. Um, you'll see very tender scenes with his family. Uh, you'll see very tender scenes with an old and very dear friend who he cares about and knows has gone the wrong way, but he can't really quite pull him out either. Uh, and so it's a, it's a real, um, it, has, it has really mythological um, remnants in the story of this every man in an everyday life unable to make ends meet. How did you two, uh, did you have time to develop the chemistry that is so apparent right from the beginning? It doesn't always happen with a new series. You have to sort of work your way into it. But you could see just from that scene, if you haven't seen the show, and, and you could see you have instant chemistry, and you know, you sort of already can tell where these two lives have been and now intersecting. Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing, first of all. It, it is rare for it to be that, that immediate and that sort of evident. Um, a lot of it for me came out of sort of hearing the music of the piece and all the bass notes he had to carry and feeling like we needed something staccato to sort of allow him to revel in those moments and, and to also move the story along. But so the chemistry became kinetic just from the rhythms, the musicality of it in my mind. But then you put us together and for some reason it just, from that moment to this moment, it's, uh, it's been that way. It's been just some sort of meeting of the heart, of the minds, of the souls that is just, you know, Lightning in a bottle. You know, it's when you meet someone that you feel like you've known forever. Skeet and I met probably 30 years ago. I was uh, teaching at the Atlantic Theater School, um, the Atlantic Theater Company in New York. And so. We had an, an immediate, you know, a liking for each other. And then we had, didn't see each other for many years and came back together. And it was just, um, it, it's, it's, you know, when you have that saying, uh, Skeet's like a brother from another mother. And, uh, and it so fits so seamlessly in this because when you're working with an actor as giving as Skeet is, and as giving as I am, um, you're, you're serving up the symphony of the music of the piece, and, and it becomes uh, much bigger than you are. And so we're able to create some explosive scenes and some very tender scenes as well, and we work together seamlessly, so um, it's really been a joy to see. Same, brother, same. I noticed it, yeah. I noticed this is very strong on, on the family story, too, and you and your wife and the family and everything you're fighting for, which is what gives us tremendous empathy for this guy, despite some of his bad decisions and things that he goes through, because we see where it's coming from. And it's intense. Those scenes are intense with the family. Uh, they are, and they're personal to me, because I realize if not now, then when? In telling this story, uh, when I saw the original driver that is taken from a British version, uh, this is based on a British based series. on the British TV show, three two-hour movies by Danny Brocklehurst, that there was a man in David Morrissey's character that I recognized. And when I recognize that man, I recognize that character uh, reflected the man that I am. And so this is peppered with parts of my life. You know, in my marriage, I made a lot of mistakes. And I'm not married anymore. I have four really beautiful daughters who I'm really committed to. And how do you navigate that? How do you navigate looking at your own mistakes and trying to recover from them and, and, and move away from that so that you can, one, one, in one moment, say, that's the old me. Well, it's not just one moment that creates that. It's living a different way. And so I had to learn in my own life to live a different way now to be able to be the new person that I envision myself to be. And so Gracie and Parrish is not me yet in that moment, but he's a reflection of things that I went through in my life. I lost my house, lost my marriage, living in a goat barn, started doing yoga, started praying to God, wanted to kill myself so my family could go on. This, this is all true. So a lot of this character, the information that has come out, again, if not now, when, um, I wanted to put into this so I could exercise the demon of that old me. Wow. <laughs> so, when this came along, did you pitch it, or how did this come to you with the showrunners and everything to get all of you into this? It, it came to me through my partner, um, my manager, Josh Kesselman, who also helped produce this. And, um, and we went to Danny Brocklehurst to write it, but he was writing for Netflix and said he couldn't come aboard. I found another collaborator to work with, and then we figured out to, how to place it in New Orleans. And then we went back to Danny uh, when we couldn't find the right writer to really write it, and Danny joined us. 
Uh, and then I pitched it to FX, it went all over the place. Again, an eight year journey, um, and got a partner, a really wonderful partner in A&E to join with AMC. Um, I took it to AMC, and they looked at it, and they started putting us to our paces. You know, do another draft, do another draft. So after eight drafts, they still were giving us a green light. I said, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Do a Bible, do this, do that. And that's when I realized that I needed to deepen the story. The story needed to be relatable. You need to look on the screen as an audience and be able to relate to any character you saw. When you look at Colin, you need to look at him and, and be empathetic toward him and understand that he's someone that you could have been if you had partially lived in the various life. And you had to like him too. So he was a, the perfect choice for that. So I started to figure out how to pepper things in that emotionally meant something to me. And then AMC, we were on the precipice and I finally just picked up the phone. Like what you do today determines your tomorrow. What you envision will come true. If you build it, they will come. All that stuff. I called Dan at AMC. And they said, look, I know you're considering, and I really feel strongly, that's not the only idea that I have. You have to have many ideas. A, B, C, backup. I went, I have an idea for more than one season, and I really love to be doing this with you because it feels like family. And, and that call um, allowed him to know my passion, which you can all feel, and that passion allows me to step aside out of my own self and do something that I believe people can really relate to and will also entertain them. So all the car stuff is, of course, it's there to entertain and it's real. You can feel it. It's uh, electrifying, but the story is really a human story that hopefully we all can relate to. Yeah. Are you doing all your own driving? I am. All right. Boy, do I love it. He's giving me pointers. <laughs> he doesn't need me in yeah. any way. Are you riding with him? <laughs> no, I didn't get to ride in some of that stuff. No, but we will. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. You know, when I went down, they said, prove it. And they put me in a car, and they went out, and they said, you know, they put the cones up, and, uh, and they said, you know, how to do a reverse 360. I'm sure you do. And I said, I said, I'm familiar, but I don't really know how. And, um, and they showed me how to do that move, which you'll see in the piece. Um, I know how to drive fast, I know how to navigate, I know how to use the brake, I know how to slide the car, I know the pit and move, so I knew a lot. And I had to show them that I knew that, and then they took it from there. They just taught me. And, and so, you know, I get a chance to do a lot of that driving, which is very, you know, it's, 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 you have to be very precise and very careful because it's a movie set, and we don't own all the streets, so I'm very cognizant and careful behind the wheel. But I've always been a driver, and, and I love driving, it's exciting, but you, you need to be in control while you're doing it. How do you like working in New Orleans? Uh, I loved it. I, I worked there one other time, and uh, and this time I think we were there five months, something like that. Um, it's it's an incredible place. The people, the food, the culture, the music, the architecture, the history, all of it. It really it's somewhere you can really feel and get involved in, and it's um it's it's just a great place to be. And playing Colin, you know, the Cajun was written in there, so. I couldn't imagine having to film that in Vancouver and you know, <laughs> do that accent on a daily basis. But uh, yeah, I, I love New Orleans. I, it's a really extraordinary place. It's there because it's a haunted city in a way as well. You can have all the good, all the light, you can also have all the dark. And for me, it was a great analogy for who Gray Parish really is in this moment that we meet in. And we want to see him move from one place to another and our audience is following in that way. So in that way, it's very rich. Rich in color, as you'll see when you see the show. Uh, but rich in music and rich in, in, in food as well. But rich in soul. I, what I'm finding is to, to make a show that, that is relatable for many people, we want to have um, many different versions of the painting. And we want to have something that's soulful, that will draw you in, so that we can do things that aren't only about just saying them. Not just with words, not just describing something. But we want you into a visual where you can feel, you can feel something. And isn't that what film is all about and television is all about? We want you to feel something deeply. And we want you to have those deep belly laughs that you will have in this as well. But you want to feel that turmoil. And that city, you can feel the energy. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and however, it exemplifies how you live your life. Parish Sunday nights, AMC. Check it out.